This is the first video in my new series, Clock Repair Essentials. And today we're going to look at setting a clock in beat. Back in the day, in the 30s and 40s and earlier, when your grandmother's clock was running out of beat and not keeping the correct time, what she would do, she'd lift the clock up on one side to see whether the beat would become any more even. You can hear there how uneven the beat is. And now it's finally stopped. All right, the pendulum has stopped because the clock's out of beat. I'll start it off again. You can hear how out of beat the movement is. There's not a constant even tick tock. So, what your grandmother would have done, she would have now lifted in the other direction, which I shall do very slowly. And listen to the tick tock that's gone the other way. You can hear that that clock is now in beat. The tick tock, tick tock is sounding pretty even. So what your grandmother used to do, she'd put a penny under that end of the clock to lift it up a little bit to keep the clock in beat so it would tell the correct time. Well, we're going to do it differently today. You can hear it's, it's still beating evenly. All right. Let's get into it. I've taken the movement out of the case and put it on a new test stand so that I can put a small level on the bottom of the test stand here. And you can see that my bench is level. That bubble is exactly between those two lines there. My bench is level. You can hear that the movement is still out of beat. It's a tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock situation. I'll show you a photo of the top of the movement to prove that it's level up there too in a moment. But initially, we look at leveling up the movement to get it in beat. I'll just slide the screwdriver under while we listen to the beat amplifier. That sounds pretty good to me. The tick tock is even and the pendulum will continue to swing. So the clock is now in beat. Our movement is seriously out of beat there. And as you remember, we lift the movement up from this side. We can find a point that the tick tock is even. And that's about it there. All right, so what we do now, this piece here, called the crutch, has to be bent. It either has to be bent in that direction or that direction to put the movement back in beat. So the obvious thing is you think, well, if we lift it at this side, then we'll bend the crutch to that direction and that'll level it out. Let's try that. Two pairs of pliers, you always need two pairs of pliers. Don't just grab it in your finger and spin it round. One pair of pliers on the side of the crutch to hold it. And the other one, we will bend the bottom of the crutch back towards the right slowly. Very gently. All right, we'll now put the movement back into beat and see how high we've had to lift the side of the, the test stand. You can instantly hear how bad that is. It's worse than it was before. All right, let's find where it's in beat. You 
getting weaker. Back a bit more. That's so far out of beat, it won't start. Right, let's lift it in the other direction, see what happens. That is in beat there. A bit heavier to hold and keep it in beat, but that's the position there. You can see the dramatic difference it's made by bending the crutch in the direction that we lifted the movement before. All right, we'll have to put the crutch back where it was. Once again, two pairs of pliers. Hold the crutch nice and tightly, and then at the bottom of it, bend it back slightly. Now we'll try it again. Set the pendulum in motion. We're still out of beat. That's pretty much where we were before. Right. So we've discovered that bending the, the crutch in the direction that we lifted it before is not the correct way to do it. So we have to bend the crutch in the opposite direction to the direction that we lifted the movement. All right, two pairs of pliers again. Hold the crutch firmly. And this time, We'll very carefully move the crutch a little bit in the opposite direction. Start the pendulum again. Still out of beat, but we'll have a look and see where where the movement's in beat. Nope, still out of beat there. Right, hold that, start the pendulum. Try it from the other side. It instantly stops, so we have to move the crutch more in the same direction that we moved it before. Two pairs of pliers, hold the crutch, second pair of pliers down the bottom, bend it a little bit more. All right, we'll try again. Start the pendulum. I think I've run out of power. Wait till I wind the movement up a little bit more. Okay, we'll try that. Pendulum going. Here we go, that's in beat now. Stop the pendulum. We've gone a little bit too far. So, flies again, hold it tight, and slowly move the crutch back a little bit. Start the pendulum and check it again. taking note of how high you're lifting the movement so you can see how you're progressing. All right, a little bit more. Hold the crutch and move the crutch back a tiny bit. All right, it's getting closer. Stop the pendulum, move the crutch a little bit more backwards. Start the pendulum. Still out of beat. I'll stop the pendulum and bring the crutch back a little bit more. And there we have it. You can hear how even the tick and the tock is, and we accomplish that by bending the crutch to the left and then to the right, 
to find out which direction we have to bend it. And then having done that, we then bent the clutch in the opposite direction in very small increments. Each time we made an adjustment on the clutch, we started the pendulum again and lifted up the movement to find out how we were going in relation to setting the beat. And it's just a matter of making small incremental adjustments on the crutch and you end up with your clock in beat. Granny would have been very happy, but she wouldn't have known how to do that. In there, you can see that cam. This is the cam that we're looking at. I'll move the minute hand and you'll see it moving up and down. Now, as I turn the minute hand, you'll see that the cup bell lever is riding up on the cam, up towards the top, 